All right, guys. Day two. Got just a few yards today. A lot of you know here in southeast Texas, we get a lot of rain. Here recently, it has been horrendous. Yard behind me. It's a little wet, but not too bad. But it's wet enough that I'm not putting a zero turn on it. No way. It'll sink it. That's why I have this bad boy. And of course this one. But mainly that one. Husqvarna TS-354XD is one bad mower. I don't know how well you can see the switch. There's a switch on the console for wet ground. Once I flip that switch, both tires lock in. Almost makes it uh, kind of like four-wheel drive. It's rear end locking differential. No, oh, excuse the sweat. It's a little warm. It's cool, but warm. Go figure. About to take care of this yard behind me with that baby. There will be no ruts, no skids, and no getting stuck. All right, guys. Got to get it done. Peace out. Catch you later. All right, guys. It's hot. Southeast Texas is hot. Been at work since about 8 this morning. I'm already soaked. I've downed probably dang near 160, 170 ounces of water. I want to stress how important it is to stay hydrated. See this? Fill them up. Don't go to a yard without some kind of water. I also recommend the cooling rags. I forgot mine at home this morning. Yeah, I know, dumb me. But seriously, with how hot it is, in our area with the heat index, it's supposed to be 107 today. I've got two yards to go, as you see. Just a big empty lot today. And then I got one more afterward. I have to stop come 12, 1230. Heat strokes and heat exhaustions are not fun. Take it from me. I have had at least three heat exhaustions. One very close to stroke. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Make sure y'all stay hydrated, guys. Earn that money. Get it done. Ma out. What are those behind you? We got some bricks. Why are we holding on to those? So we can use them when clients are. Mm, where'd we get them? They're a little rough. We got them from a demolished house. Demolished house? Yeah. Well, why are we keeping them? We're keeping them to make the uh, uh, client's house look pretty. Ah. Do you have an example of that, maybe? Yes. For the 90s kids, this means reduce, reuse, recycle! Ah, so this is the example. Can you explain what we've done here? First, we got to make sure that the bricks are lined up together. Mm hmm And um, before we did that, we also got to um, get rid of the excess that's inside of it from the old house. Mortar. It's also known as mortar. Mm -hmm. Well, it probably wondering why we would do this mm -hmm. is to make people on a low budget a pretty house or something stylish for like company. And you're able to recycle materials, right? I mean, this right here comes from an old house. It was slated for dem demolition. It was going to be carted off to a landfill. All this stuff was literally fixed to be thrown away. Why not recycle it? We sit there, we took the mortar off of it, put it out front, and you have something nice, and it's cheap. You're able to source your own materials for pennies on the dollar, rather than having to go out and buy brand new stuff. And at the end of the day, you're, you can feel good about saving the environment because you're recycling. So pretty much it's to help those on a budget then? Yes, ma'am. Anybody that's on a budget. Or if you're just a starting out landscaping and you don't have money for the materials, find a place that's fixing to be demolished, 
get with the construction crew. They actually might work out a deal with you where you can actually haul off a good car load, a trunk load of bricks if you need to. Bring them and bang off the excess mortar, clean them up, and then you can offer, here you go, see, that, see how the size of that back out a little bit? Look at the size of the ring around that. All them bricks is going to cost you probably... Uh, probably about $80 if you were to go down to the Home Depot and buy that. You just pick them up for free. So there's 80 bucks right off the top. So you could charge the customer $40 for materials because you got the materials for free. And then like another $40 for installing it. $80 in your pocket for free materials. How can you beat that? Who are you? Lily. What are you in the business? Little boss. Why is that? Because it's short for Lily. And, and I'm going to be the future boss. Gotcha. Well, what are we reviewing today? Well, we're reviewing the car cans. Mm -hmm. We have the little one as the two cycle throw. Mm -hmm. What is that used for? This one's for the weed eaters mm -hmm. and the backpack blower. Gotcha. Then we have the regular foil. Okay. That goes for the mowers. Okay. You're probably wondering what's with the weird setup here. Yes, explain to me. Well, what's so what's so great about these? Well, you have to take this off, mm -hmm. lean it down like that, and then you press okay. this button, you hold it back, and you push this down. Okay. It lets the gas out. Well, first you got to take a little, but it lets, <laughs> the, it lets the gas out. Okay. It also controls the f fuel flow. Mm-hmm. Of the gas. Okay. And it also helps with, if you have back problems, mm -hmm. it helps with uh, not having to lean over all the time, but just like that. Gotcha. Well, what do you think of them so far since you've used them? Eh, it's not hurt. It, my back doesn't hurt every day. <laughs> do you prefer these or over the old style? These. Hmm. Where did we get these? Do you remember? GIE from 2017 and 2018. Gotcha. So if you had the choice between these and going back to the regular, what do you think? Oh, well, you heard it. I got some dad. I got some dad. All right. Gas cans. You got them sealed up. They get hot. They expand. They look like a puffer fish. All right. Puffer fish, be gone. See here? Drill a small hole in the top. That alleviates it. It allows it to actually breathe. Both of them got it in it. No more puffer fish gas cans. Alright, so you bought yourself a string trimmer. It's a good string trimmer. It's been reliable on you. But after about a year and a half, it just bogs down. You throttle it, and there's no throttle. Or you can throttle it, then it goes up a little bit, but it's nowhere near like it was when it was brand new. Don't throw it away. It's not dead. It just takes a little bit of know-how, a little bit of patience, and get it fixed. There's a little doodad that's on all these string trimmers. At least they're on the Echoes, for sure. They're on the... They're there for safety reasons <clears throat> inside National Force. On the exhaust, if you look right here, on the exhaust, there's a couple of bolts right there. You take that bolt, those bolts off after you remove this shroud, and uh, inside of the inside there is a screen. Okay? And after after about a year and a half, two years of use, that screen gets clogged up bad. Okay, you can take it off, clean it with some uh, some carburetor cleaner, scrub it up real good. You can slap it back in there, and it'll be running like new. Now where I live at, I live in a very wet climate. It don't get dry enough to have to worry about these things. They're on there for us, say, you're inside of a national forest and it, uh, it rains so much. I, know, it, I mean, it's dry. It's so dry you're operating that just a little bit of tiny spark can ignite a massive fire. Out where we live at, it rains so much that you never have to worry about it. When I discovered that screen, I removed it. I made this old Echo T65T. I think this thing's about 10 years old right here. Whenever I first got it, I, this was like one I bought from a pawn shop. The guy, he didn't know what was wrong with it. Couldn't get it to go full throttle. I was like, man, that's awful. It's a junk. It's junk. Hey, uh, 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 will you take 50 bucks for it? You know what? Since I don't know what's wrong with it, short. Sure. Brought it home. Remove the screen and watch what this bad boy does now. This is actually a little bit stronger 
than the 266s that you buy at Home Depot now for 50 bucks from a pawn shop. <laughs> because of that little bitty screen.